Good stuff, amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, kids, you're just Mr. Children's Church. Good to see everybody this morning. Are y'all awake? If you're not, we're going to get Lisa back up here singing that song again. Okay? Uh, we've, got a, we've got a new visitor this morning. Sheena, where you at? Where's Sheena at? Sheena, stand up back there. You've got the baby, haven't you? That's Hoyt. That's, that's Hoyt. So y'all, y'all make sure you run by and see. As a matter of fact, there's already been a whole lot of ladies had hold. I thought Maudie was going to just keep him back there a while ago. She had hold of him look like she wasn't going to let go. Sheena, we're so glad you're here with us this morning. Thank you for bringing him. We appreciate it very, very much. Uh, <clears throat> a couple old boys were out on the ship, and something happened, and the, the ship sunk, and they found themselves in this, uh, this boat together. And they're out in the middle of the water, and, and, and this one old boy, is just he's just frantic. He's, he's like, oh, my goodness. Nobody knows where we're at. Nobody even knows that the ship went down. How are they ever going to find us? I mean, he's just absolutely panicking. He's, he's, he's frantic. And we don't have any water. We don't have any food. What are we going to do? Well, in just a little while off in the distance, there was an island. And they, they, they saw the island, so they started paddling toward the island. They finally get to the island, and it's just this little, this little island out in the middle of the ocean. There's just a few little palm trees and things out there. And, and uh, they, they get out of the boat, and they go up on there, and then this... This one old boy, he's, he's just absolutely panicking. He's just, he's just absolutely beside himself. And this other old boy that was with him, he just goes over and finds him a good old tall palm tree. And he just kind of lays down and throws his arms back behind him. And he starts relaxing, you know, and everything. And this old boy is just, he's on the beach and he's back and forth. And he's like, how, how are we ever going to be found? What's ever going to happen? How are we going to have water? How are we going to have anything to eat? What's, he's just all these things and stuff. Finally, he gets so aggravated with this old boy that's over there laying down, not a, not, 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 not a care in the world. And he runs over to this guy and he says, can't, don't you know, can't you understand, don't you know what, we're, what the situation is, where we're at, what's going on and everything? He says, aren't you worried? No oh boy, he just kind of opens his eye up and he says, nope. And this guy, he just, he just kicks the dirt and the sand and everything. He's like, why? Why don't you worry? Why can't you be worried? He said, don't you understand the situation? The old boy says, yeah, I know. He said, why aren't you worried? He said, well, buddy, I make a million dollars a month. And I tithe. I'll let you do the math. And the old boy says, what's that got to be? What's, what's that have anything to do with us being found? The old boy just kind of looked up at him and smiled real big, said, I'm not worried. I have faith. My pastor will find me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I do want to talk to us something this morning, uh, and it's kind of serious. I want to talk to us this morning uh, and talk about what it means to repent or what the word repentance means. I think oftentimes what happens is when uh, we, we get a, a tendency, and pastors are, are kind of notorious for this, we get, a, we get the tendency to start to, to preach and we start to talk about things and, and sometimes we kind of run across things thinking that people understand or thinking that they know what we're speaking of or what we're talking of. Sometimes it's like we think, well, you're supposed to know what I'm thinking or something like that. And I think sometimes what happens is it helps us to be able to kind of throw the brakes on and to be able to take something and to look at it and try our best to dissect it. And so this morning what I want us to do is I want us to look at these words repent or repentance and really focus in on what that really and truly means because I think what has happened for so many, uh, for so many of us, we have heard salvation and we have heard the salvation message, but we have not always heard what it means 
or, or, or to understand what repentance means or to repent and what it really and truly means. Uh, there's a definition here of what repentance means. It is to turn away from sin and to start following God completely. Or to repent means to change the direction of one's life. When we talk about, and we, we, we talk about, we, we're often we're always talking about things like we need Jesus in our life, or we need to accept Jesus, or we need to get saved. And, and for us, to, that, that's a very true statement. It's a very real statement. It is something that needs to happen. It is something that needs to take place. But so many times what we also do is we forget to kind of, we kind of leave this out. We talk about getting saved, but we don't talk about what repentance means. And brothers and sisters, really and truly, if we read the Bible, if we read the words of Jesus we cannot go with the, with the salvation message without repentance. It goes hand in hand. It is not something that is separate. It is not something that is different. It is repentance that takes us to the place, as a matter of fact, really and truly. What we need to know and to understand is we've got to repent before we can ever really be saved. Sometimes we go and we think, well, if we mutter the words or we utter the words and we don't, uh, we, we just think, well, if I, if I utter these words, Lord, forgive me and save me and, and, and those things and stuff, that, that is, that, that's just going to cover everything, that we're, everything's good. And really, tell you what, I, I want us to, to maybe to, to dig a little deeper, to look a little deeper, to look into ourselves and to, to remember what it is to, and, and to understand what it is to be truly repentant. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you that, that really and truly, it's hard to be repentant without some sorrow. It's hard to be repentant without being remorseful. Because what, what repentance means is that we've got, there, there is something going on inside of us, or something that is happening around us, or to us, or in us, that, is, that causes us to, to recognize it's not right, it's not correct. And it doesn't need to be a part of who I am any longer. And when we speak of repentance and we talk of repentance, this is what we're speaking of. We're talking of repent really and truly means to say that I'm going this direction. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop going that direction. And I'm now going to turn away from and go a different direction. It really is a 180 degree turn. It really is to say, I realize I was moving this way, but now I know I need to go a different way, do something different, be something different, and to turn and move away from that now. So when Jesus came and when he was speaking, when he was talking, we, we know and we understand he himself, we'll, find, we'll see scripture here in just a few minutes, of Jesus himself proclaiming repentance and what repentance means. So we need to know and to understand what this word repentance means and what it is. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3 says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. If we understand, we believe and know what, what John the Baptist and who he was. John the Baptist really and truly was the last prophet. He came and he prepared and announced that Christ is coming. And if you remember the story and remember what happened when Jesus was baptized, John the Baptist was preaching, and Jesus came out of the crowd, and he looked at Jesus. He said, Behold, this is the one I've been talking about. This is him. I'm not worthy to unlace his sandals. Remember that story? That's what John the Baptist was doing, but John the Baptist was preparing the way. And what was the word that he used? What was the one thing that he said? Repent. But what was he trying to get the people to understand? There's a way of life that is happening. There's a way of life in which we're going. There's a way of life in which it's taking us down a certain path. And we need to turn away from that. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
When we understand what re repentance means, when we begin to really truly grasp hold of what that word and how, what it means to truly repent and to repent, and I'm speaking of repenting of our sin, to turn away from our sin, to turn away from sin. And what Jesus does and what happens, he comes and we understand, and I hope we, un we know this, and I hope we understand this, that what he does is he baptizes us with his Holy Spirit. He brings to us, he gives to us his Holy Spirit. N not just something that, that is out there, and this, this is something that is real, it is true, it is tangible, it is something that really and truly grabs hold of the soul, of the heart, of the mind. But what takes place first is repentance. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15 says, Now after John was arrested, John the Baptist, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. Jesus' words, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of, of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. What was the gospel that Jesus Christ brought? What was, this, what was the salvation message that Jesus brought? Jesus brought a message of hope. Jesus brought a message of grace. Jesus brought a message of love. He says, here's the message of hope. Here is the message of love. Here's what I am bringing to you. Here's what I'm going to teach you. Here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to live this out in front of you that you may see the example. That you may be able to live this example. But not only am I going to do that, I'm going to go and do something that is going to help us be able to know and understand when we repent, there is a different way to live. And we can live that way. I'm going to go to a cross. I'm going to die on that cross. But while I'm on that cross, what is going to happen and what is going to take place, my blood is going to be shed for the covering of the sin of the world which means my sin, your sin, everybody's sin. But the only way that that can cover our sin is when we recognize and understand we are a sinner in need of a Savior. And when we understand and we come to the, to the point where we understand that we need this Savior and we understand that Christ paid the price for us, what we do is we understand I, I'm a sinner. I need you to forgive me of my sin. Lord, I want you to come and live inside of me. But I also need to do what? What did Jesus say? I need to repent. In other words, what I need to know and understand and recognize is what, what sin is doing to me. I need to know and understand the direction that sin is taking me. I need to know what the result of sin is. And I need to do something different. I need to, need to have something different in my life that when, whenever faced with these temptations, whenever these temptations come, whenever something comes to cause me to try to do something different than what God's Word says to do, temptation which leads me to sin, and to, to get me off course, to get me away from God, to get me to, to create separation between me and God. Whenever those things happen, whenever that happens, I need to understand what I need to do is I need to repent of that sin too many times too many times I hear people talking about and saying well I'm saved I'm glad I'm glad you're saved but I also know and understand that there's a way we're supposed to live our life and guess what it doesn't include? Sin. What it does not include is our going against God's word. What it does not include that it's okay for us to go against God's word. We can, so we can claim grace all we want to. I'm thankful for grace. But brothers and sisters, grace is only going to take us so far. Grace is only going to be a, be a part of who we are for just so long if what we are doing is using as, you're trying to use it as a get-out-of-hell free card. God knows different and God understands different. 
And God has given us a way to know that we can live our life, that we can be a, a, a Christian, that we can be a child of God and live our life away from sin. I know and I understand we, we have we, so many times we come to the place. And I know sometimes what happens is, is we have w the, uh, people are, are kind of caught up in the fact when they say, well, I'm going to sin every day. I don't like hearing that. Uh, the other day we were speaking. Of, where's Troy? There's Troy. We were speaking the other day and we, we kind of we got, got into this a little bit on a Wednesday night Bible study and things and stuff. And, th and, and Troy come up with a great, he, he, just, he just popped this out just like this. Whenever we admit that, whenever we say, well, I'm going to sin, I'm going to sin every day and things and stuff, you know what? Troy said, well, you've, already, you've given your permission to do it. You just gave yourself permission to sin. Brothers and sisters, might I, might I suggest to us that might, might we might start, what, we're trying, what, what we might start trying to do is what we will do is we'll get up every morning and we'll say to ourselves, we'll, not just to ourselves, but we'll pray to the Lord and we'll say, Lord, today, I, I'm, I want to live for you. I want to be the best that I can be for you today. I want to live my life in such a way today that I might be able to show someone Christ. That someone might see Christ in me. That someone might be come to a place to where they might look and they might see and understand that Christ lives in me. That I might be able to help them to see and to understand Christ can help them too. Can be there for them too. Christ can help them to live life every day too. You see, the, the, the attitude of our heart, the attitude of our mind, the whole way that we approach it says something and it means something. And what we need to do is approach this that, that we know and understand we have got the power of Jesus living inside of us. We have got the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And the Holy Spirit's job is to be there to help us to understand that what we can do is we can repent of our sin. We can turn away from our sin, which, which, which helps me to see and to understand that if I'm being tempted to do something or to go one way or to go one direction, and I know it to be against God's Word, then what I need to know and understand is I've got the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of me to help me turn away from that and move a different direction. You see, too many times if we kind of take this attitude that, well, I'm going to sin every day, then that makes it a little easier. It's just expected. It's just the way that it is. It's hard for me to believe that at one point in time, I mean, I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to give a, an accounting of my life. And he's going to put the things up there and stuff. And, and I'm going to all of a sudden, I, I, I live my life just kind of in a way. I kind of let sin just do its thing in my life and stuff. But then I, listen to what I say here. I'm going to claim grace. And do we really think we're going to fool God? Do we really think that we're going to be able to fool God and say, okay. I'm talking about when I intentionally go. I'm talking about when I go out and, when, and living my life. And if what I'm doing is I'm going out and I'm doing the things that I know goes against God's word. I know it to be different because I have read it. I have heard it. I've heard pastors preach on it. I have read it in the Bible. I've heard songs sung about it. All of these things. I've heard the Holy, the Holy Spirit has guided me and directed me away from that. And yet still I choose to go do. Still I choose to make the choice. Still I, I choose to continue to live in that. Do I believe in grace? You better believe it. Am I thankful for grace? Yes, I am.
But we can't take grace and compete it and, and put it into a competition with repentance. We can't we can't look at it and in, in, in the in the word and the Jesus' words looked at us and say, here's here's what I'm telling you, repent, which means to turn away from. To go a different direction. What did he tell the woman after she was caught in adultery and they were going to throw rocks at her? Now, what was the first words he said? Where are your accusers? Then what did he say? After she said there's none, what did, she, what did he say? Well, then neither do I accuse you. We can't forget that part. Okay? That's grace. Then neither do I accuse you. That's grace. But then what did he tell her? Go and sin no more. In other words, don't return to where you were. Don't go back to the life that you were living. Don't go back to do the same thing. Grace has been given. Repentance is something that, is, that helps us to know and to understand that what we can do when we repent, we, it helps, we, we, if we understand what it really and truly means, it means that we can turn and go a different direction. We can turn away from the life of sin, for the sin nature to be in control of our life. There's a reason why Paul called it the sin nature. The sin nature is in control. The nature of sin is in control. And Jesus said, repent of that. Turn away from that. The whole reason why I'm dying, the whole reason why I'm coming to a cross is not just so you can get saved. It's so that you can have life and have it what? More abundantly. Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 18, says, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia. This is Paul speaking. Serving the Lord with all humility, with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink away from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and, uh, and from house to house, testifying both the Jews and the Greeks of repentance... Toward God and of faith in our, in our Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. See, Paul's message was repentance. Paul's message was to turn away from. Paul's message was to go in a different direction. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, again, uh, Paul writing here, he says, For God the gr grief reproduces a repentance that leads to salvation. Without regret. Godly grief produces a repentance. What does it mean when he says godly grief? You ever hurt someone real bad? You ever done something to hurt someone real bad? It, has something ever happened that you just, you've done something you know... I shouldn't have said it, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't, whatever it was. And how bad you felt. Brothers and sisters, when, when we choose, when a person chooses to sin against God, it grieves him. It grieves him. When a child of God should find themselves in a situation or in a place or something or another, being tempted, coming to a place to where it's time to make a choice, and they make the wrong choice, they do the wrong thing, it grieves God. <coughs> what we're speaking of is a godly grief. This godly grief is what we feel inside that we are sorry we did this. I am remorseful that I did this. I am sorry that I've done this when I knew better, when I knew I shouldn't have. That leads us to a place of salvation. That leads us to a place to where we can ask forgiveness. When it, that's, that leads us to the place to where when we say it, we mean it. Too many times, I, I'm... 
I'm not, I'm not against people saying, Lord, forgive me today if, if I've done something wrong or anything like that. But when it becomes just a nonchalant prayer, when it just kind of bit something that is just, you know, how we sometimes we memorize, Lord, God is good, God is great, let us thank him for, you know. When it just kind of becomes some of those little prayers that we can, that can, we can just roll it off our tongue and we can just look at this. It's got to mean something. It's got to. It's got to come from the heart. It's got to come from the soul. It's got to be something that is true and real. So when we ask for forgiveness, that leads us to a place of true forgiveness. You see, if what I'm doing and what my what my what I'm doing is I'm looking at this and I'm going, well, this I'll do this and this is just the way that it is and just the way I do it. God knows the difference. We can't fool him. I firmly believe that if we carry this attitude throughout our life and then stand before God, it's going to be folks that will look at him and say, well, didn't we proclaim you? Didn't we, didn't we heal the sick? Didn't we go to the jails? Didn't we give water? Didn't we give food? Didn't we clothe? And he's going to look and say, depart from me because I never knew you. You follow me? Did that make sense? The attitude of the heart... The attitude of the soul brings us to a place that guides our mind and that it becomes the attitude of our mind and helps us to know and to understand who we are. We are children of God. And we are to live like children of God. No more excuses of that's just the way I am. No more excuses that it's, well, it's, just, it's just okay. No more excuses, well, I'm saved. The Bible says you will be known by your fruit. A bad tree cannot produce good fruit, nor can a good tree produce bad fruit. That's Bible. The Bible says we're known by our fruit. And we are to have what? The fruit of the Spirit living inside of us. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. That is the fruit of the Spirit. That is what is in control of our life. That is what drives our life. That is what the Holy Spirit brings to our life. True repentance leads to true salvation, which leads to a new creation, which in turn leads to discipleship, all of which makes us a child of God. True repentance says, I am truly sorry for my sin. True repentance says, I want to turn away from my sin. True repentance leads me to a place of true salvation. True salvation takes me to the place to where I am truly forgiven. True, true salvation takes me to the place to where I understand and realize I am no longer who I was. I am now a new creation in Christ. I have died with Christ in my sinful nature, and I have been rose up again in Him to live in Him. That's baptism. That's why we get baptized. That's why we do the baptism. It's not just something that we do. It's not just something that, that's there. It's not just, you know, just, just a nice thing to do or a good thing to do. The whole reason why we get baptized is for us to show that what has happened to us on the inside and to profess it to the outside, to give it to the outside. It is my testimony. It is my witness that says I have died to the old person that I am, and I am now this new creation in Jesus Christ, brought up to live for him and in him. That's what that means. When we see that and we understand that, I didn't put this on there. If you've got your Bibles with you, open up to Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. If you don't have a copy of God's Word on your phone or anything like that, on your iPad, whatever you have there, 
should be a little Bible in front of you in the pew in front. Colossians, it's in the New Testament. Paul, again, is writing. Here's what he's writing. He's speaking to those who have been saved. He's speaking to those who have, have, who have repented. He is speaking to those who are, who are living in Christ. And he, this, is, this is what he tells us. This is what he says. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds on things that are above and not on the things on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then so also we will appear with him in glory. Now listen to what he says. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness which is idolatry. On account of these things, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Let me just stop right there. Brothers and sisters, if what we do is what we choose to do, if we choose to step back into our sinful nature, if what we choose is to go back into our sinful nature, and we see and know and understand things aren't going right, Things aren't going good for me. And I don't understand. I'm praying. I'm doing all these things and stuff. I'm going to just be real blunt and tell you, you need to change what you're doing. How can God bless when you continue to go against him? How can God bless you? And, 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 and it's not that he's not hearing your prayers. It's not that he's not listening to your prayers. But what he's trying his best to do is to get us to see and to understand something's got to change. Something's got to be different. Here's what needs to change. Here's what needs to happen. Get it fixed. Do it right. But when we continue to try to, 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 to live and to do the things that we know good and well are against God's word, and then we cry out and wonder, why in the world isn't God hearing me? Why isn't he blessing me? Why, why are things going this way or that way? Did mom and dad ever reward you for doing something wrong? Here, son, you've done something wrong. I'll give you a hundred. Right? What usually happened when you done something wrong? My quiet little daddy Floyd. Man, that's, that almost sends chills down my spine. <laughs> I can still hear that belt going. <laughs> dad was talented. He was so talented. My, my dad, I can remember just as plain as day. Now, here's this quiet man. All of you, been, most of you have been around my dad. You've seen my dad, this quiet little guy. That guy, he could undo that belt and grab me up under the arm and yank that belt out and go, and, and he could throw that belt up like this and come back and it would be doubled up. And in one fell swoop, he would go, now some of you go, now that was poor kid, he got beat. No, I didn't. My daddy never once beat me. My daddy spanked me. And he didn't kill me. There's a whole bunch more than he's spanking. But let me tell you something different. Now let me let's just take that. We can clap at that. Let's see. Hey, let's see if you clap at this. As adults, some of us need a spanking. Because we're thinking we can do this and do that and we can claim this and we can claim that. Listen to me. And I'm telling, listen, I'm not sitting here trying to, I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. But what I am trying to do is to let us see something that is real and something that is true. Something that is God's word. 
that will help us be who we're supposed to be for him and in him. When it seems like we're, we're, God's wrath is falling down on us and things, life happens, life occurs, there's things that happen. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. But I'm going to tell you, if what we chose to do and what we're doing is living against God's word and trying our best to justify that and we're, we're not understanding why God's not honoring that, then this, that's God's wrath. That's God looking at you and saying, I'm angry. That's God looking and saying that, that what's happening, what's going on in your life is not real. It's not true. We need to fix it. I made it sound like my dad, you know, my dad, this, I, will, I will never, ever forget this. My dad spanked me. I did not get one spanking from my dad. That after he had spanked me, and of course I had time to go in my room or wherever and think about what had happened and stuff. He never, ever failed to come back into the room and explain to me why. This is why. If God disciplines us, he'll never, ever discipline us and then not explain why. It'll never come to a place where we don't, we don't get enlightened as to why it happened or why this took place. Why? Because this is who he's calling us to be. We're called to be a child of God. We're called to live and act like a child of God. Paul continues to write in verse 7. He says, In these two once, uh, in these you two once walked. That's when we were walking in our sinful nature. You were living in them. But now you must put them all away. What does all mean? Okay. He lists some things here anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk. From your, from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Did you catch that? Being renewed in knowledge, Christ living in us, the Holy Spirit living in us, helping us and showing us who we're supposed to be. Renewal. Here there is no Greek or, or Jew, circumcised or un uncircumcised, bar barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and he is in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, Humility, meekness, and patience. Beating, uh, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, as the Lord has forgiven, you also must forgive. And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness and in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Brothers and sisters, repentance. It's important that we remember that. It's important that we understand because repentance helps us to know who we are supposed to be in Christ. 
and how we are supposed to live for Christ. Repentance helps us to know and to say it stops here. Anybody ever look at you and say the buck stops here? It stops here. What I recognize now is that I am no longer a slave to sin. Its power and its control has been broken through Christ. Now I have Christ living in me. Now I have the Holy Spirit living in me. And now I have them directing me in my life. That I can live and be a child of God. That's why it's so important for us to know a word like repent or repentance. That's why it's so important that we understand what it really and truly means to us and for us. Never fails. Someone will say, but I'm not a perfect person. No, you're not. I'm not a perfect person. But we do have a perfect Savior living in us. Guiding us and directing us. And that's why it's important when we, when we look and we say, I need to pay attention to the Holy Spirit's leadership and guidance. It's when I choose to not listen. It's when I choose to go the opposite way or to go the different direction. That's when I find myself getting into trouble. That's where I find myself getting into places I never thought I would do. That's when I find myself sinning against God. If we recognize and understand what it means to repent, turn away from, go a different direction, follow Jesus, listen to the words of Jesus, listen to his guidance, listen to his direction, listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction in our life, the Holy Spirit will never, ever take you to a bad place. He can't. That's God's Holy Spirit after all. He can't take you to a bad place. It's not in him. That's why you men can't come to your wives and say, hey, I found a better Christian than you, a Christian lady than you, so I'm going to divorce you and go marry her. How well do you think that works? Huh? How many of you think that's, that's Holy Spirit driven? Follow the Holy Spirit. Listen to Him. He'll guide you and He'll direct you. We repent. If you... i got two minutes left. <laughs> if you've never really true, prayed this prayer, if you've never really truly included repentance, I'm going to encourage you to do so. But I'm going to encourage you to do it and say it and mean it. That I want to repent from my sin and go a different way. I want to live for you. Fully, totally, holy for you. Amen.